yes, this is indeed a continuation of last week. Um, and I think it, all of this will be a continuation, I think, though it'll kind of be separate projects that all kind of funnel in together. Um, so I'll kind of get started. I'll introduce what we're doing or what I think we're doing, because who knows where we end up. Um, but basically what I'd like to add to what we have is a markdown parser. And if you weren't here for the first part, essentially what we built was just the most basic Rust server that can actually just serve up uh, text files, uh, which in this case is HTML files so that you can view it in your browser, which basically makes it a blocking platform already. Um, I'll walk through the code again, uh, have to refresh myself and hopefully to get you up to speed with where we're at. And yeah, we'll just kind of go for it then. Uh, feel free to shoot questions, thoughts, anything in the chat at any point, and we can take a pause and have a look. Um, last time we did about two hours. It'll just kind of depend on how, how things go. All right. Uh, I think the first thing I should do is probably, oh, I have made this a project. That's good. Uh, let me just commit this stuff. So let's clear that out. So we have a nice tidy place to start from. End of first string. That's for myself later to remember. Okay, so let's just rewalk through this and see what we have. Uh, and then we'll run it, show what it actually does, and maybe tidy up some of the comments stuff that's right. Okay, where we left off is we were doing a little bit of performance testing to kind of like show how this was doing. Contents, contents, okay. Uh, so one of the things that's different from I have a video on YouTube currently, which I can find that real quick. .com. Channel. Uh, this guy. So this is kind of like a shortened version of what we did in the first session. You see it's only five minutes. The first session was probably like two hours. Um, and so that, if you haven't done it, is kind of a quick way to get up to speed. Um, what we did differently uh, in the Twitch stream is I brought in this Tokyo library. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, it is, oh boy, nope, that's not what I wanted. Uh, it's right here. And this is essentially, I don't know why they make it sound so fancy. It's just a way to do asynchronous uh, programming in Rust. And the reason I did this is because if we're using Rust here, it should be pretty much a requirement that performance is the thing we care about. Um, and the first version that I built was would do worse than a node server. Uh, and I didn't like that. So I made sure to bring in the Tokyo f as soon as possible so that we're not having to undo a bunch of work. Um, and so then again, like a little bit of difference here, we needed to use the TCP listener and the different stuff from the Tokyo library rather than just the regular um, Rust library. And so this looks pretty similar. We bind to port 8,000 uh, we start accepting uh, listeners on that port. This loop basically allows us to accept multiple. Um, and so with the asynchronous stuff with this await, yes, one is listening um, to incoming requests. But once one has been received and this is starting the process, already it's that we spawn the thing to actually handle it. And that spawn gets handled in the background. And so instantly it's able to come back around and start accepting new requests again. Uh, and that's a big part of the reason it, it ends up being so much faster is it's, it's hard to kind of conceptualize, but the operating system takes a decent amount of time to actually facilitate this stuff. And so while it's just a single function call, there's easily like 
it could be microseconds, it could be several milliseconds of time that something like this takes. And if you're blocking on that every single time, it really starts to add up as you have kind of like several simultaneous ones coming in at once. Um, and so then we spawn this guy here, and then all of a sudden, you can imagine this running kind of like separately, even though it's all running within the same process. Um, and we create this new stream, and let's see here. Then we spent a lot of time last time uh, with me learning the fact that I need to read off of the entire stream before I'm able to write to it. Uh, that was incredibly frustrating, so don't make that mistake. Don't be like me. Uh, and for now, pretty much all this is doing is it's grabbing us the request line. Uh, since right now, all we're dealing with is really basic get HTTP requests. That's all we care about. This is kind of like, you can call it hacky even. We're basically just saying, hey, if this thing hasn't been set, grab the first line and then otherwise just read through the whole thing and get out of here. Uh, and then we'll bring this back now because this is actually necessary for what we're doing. Uh, we use a regex to parse that string and try to remember myself here. The format of this, I believe, is something like HTTP 1.1 or something. Um, and so that's what uh, this request line has stored as its string. And so this guy's pulling off the get, this guy's pulling off the this part here, and normally this would actually be an actual path. And then this last one just pulls this final piece off, which we would I would don't even understand why this comes there. I would never use it. Uh, then we run the regex and we grab the path name again, which is this specifically. And so if the path name is just a regular slash, we want to just default to show them the index.html, and that's our homepage, which I'll show in a second. And then we have uh, we prepare to grab the contents. And what we do is we generate the path that we're going to read from. And so you see here I have the posts folder. And the file name will either be index.html or we'll take off. So this one dot dot is basically pulling off the initial slash and just giving us this hello world uh, HTML. And so now you can see here, this is going to amount to post slash hello dash world dot HTML, which directly points to this file right here. And then we check to make sure that it exists. And if it does, we read it to the string, grab the contents, get the content length. And then finally, this is the response that we actually write out to the socket uh, with the contents there. And then finally we write it out and we flush the stream. And if everything is all good, this should still work. <laughs> oh, of course, address already in use. Somewhere I am running something, that's great. Uh, probably some rogue node, oh my God. Why is Node so awful? Uh, of course. No process found. Well, get out of here. I have no idea. Oh, is it Docker? It is indeed. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, running. Okay, great. Uh, God, I love that. <laughs> KK99 knows all about your addresses already being bound. Uh, perfect. So this again is serving up that index.html and we'll just show that here. So here you can see welcome to my blog. We've got the two different links. Uh, and right now it's up to us to actually fill these in. In a future post, we'll go into how we can actually like generate this. Uh, that's not really what I want to focus on today. Uh, and then if I click this link, it takes me to this route. And now because this path is there, it's loading up this file. So that's a super quick synopsis. Super quick, I say it's been 10 minutes already. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's the recap of where we are. Um, and now what I'd like to do is, that's how 
show the final product first markdown post uh, I'd like something like this this is so cool I can render this to HTML um, check out my blog and then we'll even throw a link in Uh, okay, so if we were to save this and then go to that page, I already forgot what I called it, first markdown post. It returns it, but it returns it just as a string. And so we get this beautifully ugly basic text. Um, hopefully you're familiar with markdown, but essentially this would convert this into a heading this would get converted to an actual link that you can click. Uh, and then all of this would just kind of be like a paragraph. And so the, the formatting would look quite a bit nicer. Um, and in comparison to this, it's much easier to write uh, posts like this. And that's how I want my thing to work. So that's why we're doing this. So uh, I'm going to have to refresh my memory on a few things here. Basically, what I'd like to do is make a totally separate library that is going to deal with our markdown parsing. And so let's rust cargo init library. I feel like, yeah, dash dash lib creative a little library target. Okay, we'll see how badly I can mess this up. I don't want to put it in here. Uh, let's do something here first. Let me move this to my Twitch folder, uh, Twitch blog, which is probably going to blow this whole thing up. Let's see what happens. Talk to Twitch blog. Okay, and then let's reopen that up. Great. Okay. Yeah, I hate that request. Good. And then, oops, I probably should have a Rust folder. Ugh, okay, one more. So sorry. Uh, make dear Rust move blog, Rust blog. Okay, hopefully that's the last time I need to do this. And then what I'd like to do here is cargo init, I guess we said dash lib. And we'll just call this markdown. And then we'll add that folder, add folder to workspace, uh, markdown, the whole thing. Yeah, why? I trust it. I just trust it. Uh, okay, so now if I were to jump into this guy, I should be able to do a cargo test, I assume. Yeah, and so it just runs the tests. And it's going to take me a whole 10 minutes probably to remember how to create a function that we can access from here. But thinking about it, we don't need that yet. If, that, if anything, I prefer we just ignore that the blog exists. We will eventually use it. But basically, at the end of the day, we're creating a function that takes in a string, which is our markdown string, and converts it to HTML. So we don't need to think about the blog at all right now. We're just talking about this markdown library. Um, and then kind of what we'll also go over is how to actually write unit tests in Rust. Um, and I will admit that I've only really done this a couple times. So I'm still fairly new to this, but that's the way that you learn. Um, so we'll have some function markdown to HTML and it will take in a string. Uh, we can even call the string markdown. Uh, obviously, I forget all syntax in the short amount of time it's been. And then for now, we'll just return the same thing. And I think I need to specify the return type. Great, and it's gonna be like, it's never used. Okay, so then we'll change this to, we'll just say it returns itself because that's what it's currently doing so markdown HTML uh, hello and then we'll 
result equals, and then we'll, we will assert that the result we get back is And we can do the cargo test again. Not found in the scope. I'm pretty sure it's right there. <laughs> uh, it's probably something silly. Let's see here. Use crate markdown. Consider importing this function. That seems like a weird thing to have to do if it's right there. That's right either. Or it is. Okay, great, cool. It is never used. Um, let me just add a curiosity. So uh, Rust library. What do I want? Export function. Okay, child module creates a modules. One of these maybe. Blah, 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 blah. I think if you just put it in here, it will take everything. Oh. <laughs> and then presumably this crate just references my existing crate. Like what's the, what's supposedly the default way of doing this, importing external crates? Uh, maybe we'll just check out the rest book. Surely they've got an example of this. I've also seen super. Oh my gosh. When did you learn so much rushed? <laughs> oh, in my own code. <laughs> uh, packages is crates. Uh, no, 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 no. Common collections, air handling, automated tests, high rate tests. Yeah. Huh? Okay, but can you test an actual function? Like, what's. Oh, look at this guy. He knows his stuff. Okay. Uh, that's fine. That's cool. I like that. That seems to make more sense to me, though it's still a little bit strange, but I can work with that. Okay. Um, and then I don't totally care about exporting the function yet. We'll deal with that. Oh, pup. That's all I need. Okay, good. I just wanted those squiggly lines to go away. That makes me happier. Great. So now it returns itself. Done. Uh, false. Uh, so what's the easiest one to start with? I mean, maybe it's helpful to have a look at markdown syn syntax, markdown, I don't know. Output, I almost put calculator, it's not a calculator. What I, I just wanna show what it does, syntax, guide, one of these two. What is this? Search any image, I'll get out of here. Uh, license basic, dingus. What on earth is dingus? That's a terrible name. Uh, span elements. Paragraphs, headers, block quotes. That sounds like the basics, I like it. Uh, perfect, this is exactly what I wanted. Just a short little example. Oh, interesting. I have never seen that syntax, and I would never use that syntax. That sucks. Uh, so we'll ignore the header for now. I, we just want to start with the most basic example, and I think the paragraph is going to be the easy one. So right here, they've taken the text, and pretty much any text gets wrapped in a p tag. And that's where we're going to start. Uh, because you'll see that the actual parsing of Markdown is a little bit to wrap your head around. And so first thing we'll want is, so we'll just still leave our hello, but instead our expect changes to this. Um, and this should obviously fail, and it should even tell us the left side of that was hello, and the right side was this guy, therefore it's wrong. So now the fun stuff begins. Um, I've never actually like, I've written multiple parsers. Now I have like an HTML parser that I've tried. I've done this markdown one just like a couple weeks ago, just to make sure that I 
wasn't going to be a total disaster. Um, but I've never like read a thing that's like, hey, here's exactly how you should do parsing. So I'm pretty sure there's better ways. Um, but I think it's helpful to just like try a problem and just do it the way that feels natural to you. Um, and the thing that I found natural is to just kind of like iterate through every character of this string. And then we'll basically kind of like craft stuff off of that. Um, if we wanted to be really cheeky, we could simply solve this problem by doing something like, um, let me see if I can get this right. You know what, let's actually even just start with that, oh, of course. Cool. Uh, funny thing is, is this is reminding me of, I had an interview once that went pretty much like this, where I was building some, it wasn't necessarily a parser, um, but it was something like this. And they just had me like incrementally write the function that solved each new unit test. It was kind of neat. Um, but then you do stuff like this and you're like, okay, cool. Like this test passes and then you write a new one. Supposedly that's test driven development. I don't know anyone who actually does that. Um, but let's see, we don't want it return to the self. So it wraps text in P tag. So technically speaking, that succeeds, no problem, we're done. Um, let's add the new requirement that it, let's, yeah, let's, let's start with the header. Converts this guy to, of course I can't put that in there. Converts hashtag to header. And so now, instead of that, we have, Hello. And this would instead become H1, and this becomes H1. I don't know why I made the capital. It just feels wrong to have a lowercase header. And now we'll run this. Both of these guys should run. And you'll see runs two tests. This one succeeded. This one failed. And that's good. Uh, apparently, I can also just hit this, and it will only run that test. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 and that's interesting. What if, just out of curiosity, if I were to hit debug, does it actually work? Or is it just gonna, oh, that's pretty cool. That's a first for that to just work right away. Um, that is a completely useless, what is the point of that? I can't see the result at all. Ay, ay, ay. It's so easy. Just debug. It's like, well, it's a string. Like, tell me what the string is. Anyways, that's fine. Ay, ay. Even better. Okay, just exit. Oh, get out of here. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, yeah, that doesn't seem very useful. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so now we need some concept of, okay, if there's no hashtag, we're going to want to keep the P tag. If there is a hashtag, we want to wrap the thing in an H1. So like I said, I think the easiest way to do this is just going to be to kind of like walk through it. And then we'll also slowly kind of generate what's effectively a state machine. Um, and I will be making up most of this as we go. Um, still don't have for loops memorized in Rust. Let's let's see if the JavaScript type works. Does that work? Did I get it first try? It's not complaining. Um, of course. Try calling to. Hey, you know what? They're always like, ooh, our error messages are so good. That is pretty good. Uh, let me see. Oh, Kila ate the sky. Uh, of course.
accuracy. I still feel like there's an error here. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. Hmm. Oh, that's still just failing because it's wrong. Great. But here it shows that it's actually printing out character by character, which is exactly what we want. And so what we can do is if C equals this guy, we're going to change the tag to the H1. And then we'll just default to the P because that's going to be, generally speaking, what we find. Um, do I want that in the for loop or outside? I think outside. So we'll do let tag equals uh, from this. We default to the P. What's your problem? What's a character? If you're from JavaScript, this and the other one are the same. In every other real language, they're different. Fun fact. Uh, tag equals string from h1. So if we find this, all of a sudden we just swap this to that. Um, and then we have kind of a new, of course I need to make this mutable because we're changing it right here. Uh, now you're saying I'm not using it, that's fine. Um, we'll then swap this so it's actually just using that tag. And let's just run this for fun. It doesn't work, but it's fun to see what happens. So the first one now still succeeds even with this, and that's because this just gets totally stepped over, no big deal. The second one fails because we got the correct header, but now it included the hashtag and the space afterwards. And so we basically want to swallow that. So right now we're just taking the thing that came in, but we basically want to ignore certain characters. And so we can, this is I think the way I want to do it. We'll do a result equals string new. So we'll generate a new string and then we'll only push characters that are relevant. Um, and this is, will also be helpful as we have multiple stages of this. As in eventually we'll have a title text and we'll have some paragraphs and we'll have some other stuff. Um, and we'll see how successful we are in this process. Uh, okay, so if it's this, we convert the tag to that. That's great. We want to ignore that, but then we also want to ignore the next character. Well, that's not even true. That's, if this showed up and there was no space after it, or it didn't show up at the start of the sentence or line, I guess, then we wouldn't actually want to do this. Um, let's just ignore that. We'll stick to the, the basic case. Um, <laughs> so let's just do this the cheap way. So if it's that, I mean, it'd be nice to just, what I really want to do, and this is totally not valid, <laughs> is just continue twice. Uh, just skip the next two characters. That's not going to happen. Uh, okay, let's we we can bring in our let's just fix this result first. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. Append no push string push a character. That's what we want. Yeah, C. Cool. And this should give us the same result as before. Yup. Yep. Okay. Um, so I guess first easy one. Let's let is just hit continue. And then we'll see, okay, cool, we're a little bit closer, but we've got that leading space. There's a couple couple things we could do. We could just trim any excess space, because let's say somebody had this. Does the space really matter? No. So we could instead... Man, I'd almost like to just do this by index rather than character by character, because then I could just peek ahead and know right away. Bytes, chart, indices. All right, if what, why can't I 
peek ahead, if is that what your question is? Because if it is, that's what I'm going to try to do. <laughs> uh, let's see, equals markdown dot character at. Surely, can I just do this? This seems very JavaScripty. Of course not. String cannot be indexed. It's not implement. Okay, how to just index string by index? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is really as bytes. Now we gotta convert it to a car. Interesting, returns an iterator. And that's gonna walk through the whole, that just seems so inefficient. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, back. Or can I just get the iterator, iterator, next. Next, back. I'm curious, let's, let's work this through with an iterator. Let's see how this goes. saying we loop it so it's gonna be very similar to our for loop except now we'll do it with this oops get out of here oh man running to oh whoosh i just put an empty loop that's a forever loop for you uh when do i exit let me walk through it. Next, ungrab not with it. And is that is that? Let's see equals iterator dot next, and then if c that is none, break. So that should at least not last forever. Great. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is now very similar, except we're in control of the iterator, which I'm curious. Can we go previous on an iterator? Back, and the back, next back. What is the next back? Removes and returns an element from the end of the iterator. One, two, three, four, five, six. So. Pulls it off. Next back five. Interesting. Is there a first back? How can I make the back? Can we go the reverse direction? R find skip. Okay, it doesn't really seem like it's what it wants to do. So that's cool. We'll make sure to just do it forwards. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So now we have the character. We can pretty much just bring back what we had, except not inside the for loop. Uh, we already have C pulled off the iterator. What's your problem? Now it's because you're this stupid thing. C is not. Yeah, but this is the C option, and what we want is, like, what's the standard for this? What I want to do, this seems ridiculous to do, but we're going to do it. Uh, and then I can do let C equals sum. No, I still don't want some. What am I doing? I want to unwrap that. You can tell I don't use this very much. Okay. That seems okay. That should at least pass one test. Great. Yep. And now we're checking that. Okay. So now instead of the continue, what 
we can do is so we'll both swallow it and we'll move the iterator forward once and then we'll just not care about that so for now this is just going to assume every time we see this there's a space after it i'm good with that uh, blah, 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 blah. and then we only push result if we didn't do that and i think that should yes success pass both our tests okay uh, great we can now convert these bad boys let's see we could either do like subheadings or combining both what's going to be preferable one heading subheading or links oh man so many so many options uh, I think let's deal with the new line situation because right now just with this I can have a nice title and I can just write everything as paragraphs and that would be functional enough uh, so we'll add a new test for uh, it you know what I forgot should I like it should it just feels good um, Bird header and I'll just say H1 even same uh, multi line. Okay, so we got kind of a couple new pieces coming in here. So let's say hello is our title. We'll then have a new line and then it will be. Uh, just our hello message. I'm just keeping it short because it's easier to write tests when they're smaller. So this would look something like uh, this. And this one should definitely fail. And if not, I would be shocked. Um, but what did it actually give us? So here it returned the H1 wrapping the whole thing. But we got our new lines back and didn't get this wrapped in a P. <laughs> So let's deal with that. And the main problem is going to be the new lines. So we can at least start with else if C equals new line. Then we got to do something special. And what that special thing is, we mostly just want to swallow them. But a new line also kind of acts as a reset. And so right now we're only pushing the result at the very end. What I think we're going to need to do is also push a result on a new line, um, except it's not just going to be a character. It's going to be this whole thing. And so let's see. So on new line. So result is the entire thing that we want to return at the end. But then we have a new concept of an kind of like an intermediate result. Um, Let's call it line. Oops. And line will, let's see here. So we want to say line. Okay, so instead of result push, this is actually line.push now. And then we push the character there. And then we have a few things to tidy up here. But basically, on a new line now, we want to push, not just push, append that line to the entire result. So we could do something like this, where whatever the previous result, we add in now the current line. And then we're also going to reset that line. Yeah, so that we can fill it back up. Uh, and then we have yet another case where if the line is empty, uh, if it's empty, can I just do line dot length? Yeah, oops, equals zero. Then we just ignore. We just move on. Um, break. Let's say not equals to zero. Gives us a result. Uh, let me think here. So we got the tag. We push the character. What's your problem here? Oh, I 
I guess let's just see. Okay, that's fine. And you probably want this. Great. And is not unwrap. I'm just curious. I know nothing is going to work, but it does run, so that's good. Um, let's just focus on this last one because you'll see right here that I totally broke these first ones, but we'll focus on this and then the last one will come together at the end. Um, this is what's kind of fun about unit testing this way is originally these are kind of our easy cases, but in order to make this case work, I'm actually breaking these in the in between intermediate stage, making this one work and then going, okay, cool, we need to get these to work as well too. Um, I would love to do more unit testing. It's just, it feels like a barrier, um, mostly because a lot of what I do is UI and I hate doing UI testing. Result line, okay. So the other thing we're gonna wanna do on this, let's take a look at this, left, right, hello. We got the first one. Actually, you know what the problem for both of these is basically the same. Uh, it's essentially missing the last line and that's because neither of these end with a new line and we're explicitly only adding to the result on a new line. And so we essentially need a final end case where we say, hey, if the line still has something in it, um, then append it. Uh, that's not right. Uh, so we just take exactly this format line. That could probably be a bit tidier, but let's just see how that goes. Okay, so we're back. These guys are back working again. And this last guy still has a problem. And that problem is right here. It, hmm, interesting, line, new line, came through. We got the new line, we skipped them, so we didn't add them, but it failed to wrap them in a tag again, which is interesting. What's the flow of that? Okay, you know what, we can, let's try this whole debugging thing again. It might not show the correct stuff in the variables, but it should show the flow of code. Okay, so that's our first guy. Uh, we then, like surely at least C can show up as a character. Great, it does, okay, so we're on the H. Um, the vectors are useless, that's annoying. But at least we've got the C, so we've already read this guy. We're now on an H, and we'll go through. We just push the character, there's gonna be a whole lot of this. It's just gonna push the hello text. And boom, where are we at now? Okay, our first new line. And so now line should have stuff in it. Great, we come in our tag. We can't actually see it because why Why would it be that easy? Um, why am I, oh. <laughs> ay, 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 this is just, this is doing nothing. This is just formatting a thing and doing absolutely nothing with it. Uh, so instead what should happen is this should go and replace this and this should be line. I don't think I needed the debugger to tell me that, but we did anyways and this guy's got the exact same problem. I'm surprised this doesn't throw some sort of an error. Like this is just unused function. I broke them all. Panicked. Search the up left, right. Okay, we got some nice double tagging happening. Which is 
Salt, tag, tag, line, result. So it should be empty at first. Oh my, it's so confusing. So many layers. Uh, result. So at the end of the first one, this should be H1. Hello. So then Y. I've only ever done that, yeah. Result is whatever the current state of the result is, at least in my mind. Line equals empty. Oh, we're doing it again. Uh, yeah, so this should just now be the regular result. I still feel like there's one too many wraps, but no, we're good, okay. Back to our one failure. Perfect, this is exactly where I want it to be. <laughs> uh, so this first one worked. The second one, we've got the wrong tag, and that is because we need to reset it here. And so if P is our default, we just need to set it back to P here. Boom, look at that, okay. Um, this, I think, is a good place to pause and we'll try to incorporate this into our app. There's way more functionality that can be provided here, but I want to kind of showcase that even in its current form with whatever this is, this is like 30 lines of code, it's a functional enough markdown parser. Um, and I'm sure along the way we'll find things that don't work, yada, yada, yada. So now we have a library that's this markdown library. I want to include it in our blog project. I think I know how to do this, uh, but we will find out whether I actually do or not. Mm, let's see, we have this function that's public. That's good. I would guesstimate that we can do mark down equals the question is is how can i point to it surely i can just point to the file how to add library to ring list uh, i think i'm gonna close the rest of the stuff clean this up Is any of this what I want? Test application and blah 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 blah. No. Creating library, maybe. That seems old of some sort. Using library, okay. That's a starting point. Nope, none of that is helpful. Import library is always cool. Okay, how to add local library rust. That's the guy. And that's what I thought. Path, my lib, my lib, my lib. I don't know which syntax I like better. We will do this one. Path equals, and it's just back one, I think. Markdown. And that should allow us in here to do use markdown. Ooh, ooh, it even auto completes it. Look at that. Um, we can do a couple of things. We can either support both or check it. I think just for testing purposes, we'll just. Ah, oh, we can check it. Okay, fine. Um, is there a, what distro am I using? This is just Ubuntu. I'm pretty plain and boring. Um, should be whatever the long, LTS is, long-term support. So either 20 or 22. It's a VM. Uh, no, I run this on my actual machine. I would never use Windows again. It's just a terrible operating system. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
No problem. Thanks for asking. Path name. Okay, so what I want to do is pull off the extension. And what I'm curious is whether Rust has an extension function. So that I don't have to do it. Try to give me path idiomatically. I love how people put fun stuff in here. You can use the provided. That's what I wanted to know. Path new file name dot extension and then oh, okay to string interesting option string to string get extension for file name some gc okay that's cool that's cool so let extension equals path all right I forgot dot extension is it already a path or it's a path I guess I should just make a path with this guy. Oh, I do. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Um, full path. This should really be just string, so it's clearer. And then this guy can be. And then we check that path exists. Read to string. Surely I can just use the actual path now. Skip you. Okay, we read the string, and then afterwards we do a check that the extension is uh, empty. And if so, we convert our contents. And if this works, wow, I would be excited. over to our other, okay, I don't have another one, great. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Inferred expect reference OS string. What the frick is the difference between an OS string? And then OS2 string, fine. Can you just auto import it? Like you know, you know where it is. Okay. Now there is the real possibility that this. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, so here we can see that it correctly converted that first one to a header and that to a paragraph tag. Uh, obviously we didn't support this yet, but if I were writing without links, this would totally be usable. Uh, and honestly, a good chunk of my writing is. So that's starting success. If uh, you wanted, you could just cap it off there. I think we'll proceed forward and we'll have a look at links next. I think that seems the most important. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. Um, we'll just do a quick check to make sure that how about with multiple paragraphs and then random header here, and then we'll also throw in this is a h2. Uh, so we reload that. Oh, interesting. That's a funny way of doing that. Okay, so this all looks good based on what we'd want. This one's kind of funny. This one should be an H2. Um, I think I'm actually, I'll do this one first and then we'll do the link. And I think we'll kind of wrap up with that unless there's any further questioning. So it should, should convert, just keep this simple, h2, like that's it, that's all we need. Two of these guys, as long as this works and the other tests pass, we should be good. Okay, and if we 
run that. There should be a guarantee that that's going to fail. Let's stop that. Three pass, one filled. Of course. Same exact thing. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Both got the H1 and we got the extra space because it's swallowing this guy, but then keeping this one. So this will change how we need to parse through that, I think. Um, which, interestingly, so we could, I don't know how messy this is going to get, but we could basically take a look at this. As we walk through this, we can generate, oh, hey, like we were here once, so we're in H1, and then we go through it one more time. If it's still one of these, we keep updating our tag. And then as soon as we see a space, we just go, okay, cool, let's do it. Um, you know what, we might as well solve the other bug of it should not convert hashtag mid text, whatever. Um, so if I were to do hello, this guy, we should just get a paragraph with that. So that should also fail. And I'm curious what it even came out as. Right. That makes sense. Okay, that's fine. We'll leave it at that. Uh, so I've created two problems. I probably shouldn't have done that, but here we are. <laughs> so right now we're doing if blah, 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 and this. I think it's actually going to be an easy fix for checking the, the start of a line. We can just add a if line.length equals zero. And look at that. We already fixed that problem. So it's basically just always checking, hey, are we at the start of the line? Only then do we think that this might be one of these. And I think even something like this should create a header. So I'm not even going to handle the case where there's not a space. So that makes that even easier. Uh, so now basically, we pretty much just want to count how many hashtags there are. And we'll use that to update this number. And then this will solve uh, h2 through h6. Um, I won't do all of them per se, but we'll at least do two to prove that it is indeed working. Uh, so we'd have a little like let hashtag count equals, we've already found one, so we can do that. And then if iterator.next, <laughs> I guess we can do a loop, a loop within our loop. That's fun. Um, and if iterator.next, Next, oops, that's going to come back as sum. We can just do equals sum hashtag. Then we increase this. Yeah, oh gosh. Oh, uh, you can't use plus equal. You need to just, oh, it's that's fine. Okay, 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 okay. And then the tag, that will do the format with H and then hashtag count. How about them apples? And what is your problem? Is unreach, oh, yeah, that's important. Else break. So any character other than this is going to break us. I'm actually surprised how easy that was. It's never that easy. Should not convert hashtag. Okay, great, 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 great. Uh, we are swallowing. Oh, there's just a random, random guy there. Okay. Look at them apples. That is a success. And now the cool thing, I guess I need to restart it, but it should just be good to go. 
Ooh, got subheaders. Okay, okay, okay. And that should convert anchor. So this is the text that goes here, and then this is the link. And then what we should get out of this is a href. Uh, I cannot do that. What's the magic? No, that makes a raw string. Can I do this? No, 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 no. Okay, we'll be just lazy. A href. I should pull this out, slap it there, and the text that goes in should go there. test that that should fail and instead just says hey let's throw that in the p what do we want from here So this is kind of a new tag. We've got this attribute concept as well, but we basically want to detect this because that's going to be the first thing that tells us that hey, like a link is starting. And you know what? We can use the same thing we did. I like this. We're kind of like doing a state machine, except the state machine is just like embedded inside the if statement. I think it's pretty cool. Maybe you don't. I don't care. Else if. So here, as soon as we see that character, this guy, I'm not seeing that. That's me. If it's that, the tricky bit here is that it's possible you could use this and not have it be a link. I feel like I almost never use this, so initially I'm just going to ignore that case um, and possibly only fix it once I actually do use that. Which now means we could just say, okay, cool, guaranteed, we're starting an anchor tag. And so the first thing that we will pull off is the text. Close. That's just a new string. And then we loop and we read until this guy is a one of these. And so if iterator dot that's some this guy. Okay. Then we'll just break out of. Well, we don't even have to break out of the loop, really. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which one's easier. Let's just leave it at that for now. So if it was that, we exit. Otherwise, we take the character and we append it. I needed yet another variable. It's kind of silly, but that's okay. Um, inner, inner care. I probably could just overwrite this, but I wonder if that would be confusing. It shouldn't be. See, we'll just make this mutable. Somebody's screaming somewhere. Not to do that. But alas, I did it. See, it's next dot unwrap. There's all kinds of errors that probably exist if you were to craft a terrible string. But we're not going to worry about it. Push C. Okay. 
Okay, so we've correctly swallowed that first bit, which is exactly what we want. And then what we want to do at the end of this is add that. So this we know for sure is an A, href equals. And this will be, I guess this will be even, oh, we don't have an href yet, so. String new. That's now this guy, and then the text goes inside this guy, and that tag is a. Uh, that's not mutable. Blah blah blah. Okay, so now we'll just we'll do this the sloppy way. We'll just assume if equals that. You know what, funnily enough, this is actually going to be our break. Because um, we'll, oh, but that's going to push the wrong one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can just jump the gun. This will definitely break if you have something that's not structured correctly, but I don't care. href. Now we come in. Or the next one, so now it's the sky, and so then the sorry, it's the sky. And then the first thing we see here, we should be pushing, and as soon as we get to the end, we ignore it. Uh, and this is href. Look at that, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some other problem, but let's visually see it to confirm. Yeah, so this has now put it on its own new line. Oh, which is a whole, that's a whole new battle. Check on my map. Oh, that's even more interesting. It put it on the line before because it's still building up this line. Okay, so what do we do when we see stuff like that? We add a new test. Href inline link blah blah blah. We'll just recreate that exact same situation. And I don't even know what I think the answer is. I think it should be inline link space, and then the href, and then this. That guy should now fail. And I've got two of the names, should convert inline anchor. And then we see basically exactly what we were seeing on the website. Inline link P. Okay, so at this point, we've already read through, we're already picking this up. What we want to do is inject this in the middle of the existing line rather than the final result. And so I think the solution here is line. That's fine, line will get wrapped. Let me see. Oh, and we broke two. It got us close though. What is different? So this one I think is working correctly. Hey, which one did we fail? The basic anchor one, of course. I think that's correct though. So this should really be this. And I think that's standard uh, markdown. So we fixed the code, which actually identified that our test was broken. Boom. Wow. Okay, we got ourselves a markdown blog. That's pretty sweet. Header, let's just take a look back at the markdown syntax. I don't think I'm gonna do anything right now, but I kinda wanna just take a look at what we would maybe do in the future. Headers, meh, block quote. That would just be the same thing. That's not really interesting and I don't use it ever. Lists are probably kind of interesting. Um, 
can eventually use that. And images. But all of, all of this should functionally work pretty similar to what we just did. Um, so all kinds of tidying we could do, but I think that's cool. Um, so I think I might wrap that up right there. Um, if anyone has any questions, like shoot a shoot a question, or if you want to see me do something else, you have an idea, let me know. Otherwise, I'll cap this here. Um, I'd probably kind of like write this all up after the fact, and I can put this on uh, this DevTales site as a post. And if I'm really good, I can edit this video because that was a pretty decent run through, I think, actually. That's a first.